Now let's practice with procedure calls in detail. So here we have a program it has a main, a manipulate, and a double. And main is going to call manipulate, and manipulate is going to call double. And there's some problems with main and manipulate. Neither of them is following the conventions for arguments and results, that is sending things back and forth between the procedure calls. Neither of them is saving the necessary temporaries onto the stack. And the program's never going to exit because we're not doing something else. So what we're going to do now is we're going to first go through and identify all the callers and callees, and then fix the problems by modifying the code. So the first part, which of these are callers and callees? So if we go through this, what we see is that main is a caller only. Main is the first function in a program, so nobody calls it. It's just responsible for calling things. So it's only a caller. How about manipulate? Well, manipulate is called by main, which means it's a callee, and it calls double, which means it's a caller. So this is both a callee and a caller. And how about double? Well, double never calls anything else, so it can't be a caller, but it is called by other things, so it's just a callee. And you need to know whether something's a caller or a callee so that you know what you need to save in it. All right, let's take a look at main. So go through and figure out how we can fix it so we follow the conventions for arguments and results and save the necessary temporaries onto the stack. So let's walk through this. So for following the conventions for arguments and results, let's see what we're doing here. What are the arguments and results for manipulate? So what are we trying to send into manipulate and get stuff back? Well, the arguments here are A and B is what it expects, and we put A and B in T4 and T5. So our arguments in T4 and T5, and we're getting the result back in S0. We're using it down here. Now, where should they be? Well, according to the convention, we put the arguments in A0 and A1, and the results come back in V0. So we need to change this code. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put in copies. We're going to copy our T4 and T5 into A0 and A1, so they're in the right place to use as arguments. And then we're going to change manipulate so that it returns the results in v0. And then when we use it, we'll do it in v0 here. So we're going to have to fix manipulate as well, but we need to fix our code to assume the results are in v0. So now we fix things for the arguments and results. How about dealing with the temporaries? So what temporaries are used by main? Well, main uses t4 and t5. So here's t4 and t5. Do we need to save them? Well, for t4, yes because we use it after we call manipulate. So when we call manipulate here, it may overwrite T4, but we need T4 when we get back here, so we need to save it. But T5, even if manipulate overwrites it, that's fine, because we never use T5 again in our program. So we don't care if manipulate overwrites it, and we don't need to save it. So we can go ahead and do this. We can push our stack down and store T4 on it, and then when we're done, we can pop our stack up and go ahead and store it. Uh, sorry, and restore it. Now, a fair question here is instead of doing our computations in T4 and T5 and then copying them into A0 and A1, could we just use A0 and A1 here at the start? And the answer is, yeah, you certainly could. You'd still have to do one copy for use later on to make sure you still had it around. That's for down here. Okay, now let's take a look at manipulate. So for manipulate, how about the arguments and results? Well, what are the arguments for manipulate. So the arguments for manipulate, it's taking in its inputs here, A and B, in T0 and T1. And it's returning the result here in T5. So where should these things be? Well, the argument should be in A0 and A1, and the result should be in V0, as we discussed before. So let's take a look at this. Now we need to change the code here, so we use our inputs from A0 and A1, and we put our result into V0. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. How about if we look at double? Because remember, we're calling double here. So for double, we currently have its inputs as C and D, and we put them in T2 and T3, and the results are coming back in T4 and T5. So these are not in the right place. Where should they be? Well, the arguments should be, as usual, in A0 and A1, and the results in V0 and V1. So we need to change things around. We need to put in some copies to copy from T2 and T3 into A0 and A1 for double, and then we need to change double so it returns the results in v0 and v1. And then we need to change our code so that's where we expect them. All right. What temporaries do we need to save and manipulate? So what temporaries does it use? Well, there are a bunch of temporaries here, t2, t3, t4, and ra. But the question is, which ones do we need to save? So if we look at this t2 and ra, we do need to save. Because after we jump to double, we use t2 again, and then we use ra again. 
So if it changes them, we need to save it. So we got to save those two. But T3 and T4, we don't need to save because we don't care about them after double. If you look at this, we never use T3 again after double. And after double, we immediately write over T4 without reading it. So we don't have to save that. So we can go ahead, push our stack down by 2 to make safe for saving both T2 and RA. And then do the same thing at the end. Restore them and move our stack up again by 2. Or sorry, by two words, eight here, and this should also be eight. Okay, so remember that T4 is written here, so we don't care if the double overwrites it, and that's why we don't have to store it. All right, let's take a look at double. So what do we need to do for double? Well, in double, we're lucky. Everything's all set. So the arguments are in A0 and A1, which is correct, and it's returning the results in V0 and V1. So that's exactly what we expect, so we don't have to change anything for double. So what did we do here? Well, when we wanted to identify things, we started off and said, who are the callers, callees, and caller callees? So it can be both. So this is important so we know what they need to go about saving. Then we went through and made sure that the arguments and results were in the right registers. And then we went through and we figured out what were all the callee save registers that we write to. And we have to save those because if it's callee save and we write to it, then we could mess it up for whoever called us and we need to save it. We looked at all the caller save registers. And these ones we need to save if we need them after the call. So when we call someone, it may mess up the call or save registers. And if we need to keep those values around after the call, we have to save them. 